All right, my name is Rich Schmidt. I'm here with Dick Withnell. We're at Withnell Motors in Salem. It's May 16th, 2022. Dick, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, you bet, Rich. Uh, let's start this kind of early, early part of your life. Yeah. Uh, tell us about uh, where you grew up and uh, how you ended up at Linfield. Yeah. Well, I uh, grew up in the Seaside Astoria area and then I went to high school for four years at Roseburg High School and uh, uh, wasn't really a great student. I always uh, make the, the joke of uh, I married uh, Gail with now, who was who, uh, Gail Harris, who was uh, uh, the vict valedictorian of, uh, of uh, Roseburg, where in the days where the valedictorian was no B's, <laughs> it was straight A's, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, never got any B's. And then the joke goes like this: that, that we went, to, we got to Linfield together, and uh, when she graduated, she's graduated magna cum laude. She never got any B's, and I don't know what the big deal is. I never got any B's in high school or college, <laughs> <laughs> and that is the friggin' truth. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then I went to, got, uh, I was going to go to school in the University of Miami, matter of fact, and then. Uh, and then uh, they got accepted, uh, but then decided uh, it was more important to stay closer to Gale. And but because of a legacy, my dad went to uh, Linfield, uh, Harold Withnell, and uh, and so I got in and uh, at, at Linfield, and then uh, uh, graduated in '64. Gale and I got married uh, in the '63. I worked for the uh, uh, n news register for Phil Bedeen and Homer Rose. And they were really, really great mentors. I really learned a lot about uh, advertising there uh, through Homer Rose. And I probably would have stayed on there, but the money was, was, was not too good. And, uh, and that's, I, you talk about money, it's, it's, it, it, I, I worked in the woods uh, the summers of uh, sophomore, junior year, and I made more money setting chokers. My shoes are right there. <laughs> made more money setting chokers than I did with a bachelor's degree and two years with uh, with the U.S. Bank, and uh, so uh, but so I, I that was my learning experience there. And then uh, Harold Elkington was the professor, and uh, and uh, Professor Hart was the I can't think of his first name was the it was the uh, was the uh, principles of economics. Really a good guy, but just tough as nails. And my first year, first year, I didn't buy all my books and stuff. Uh, my first term because I didn't have any money and stuff, and and so I flunked the principles of economics. And the very first grade on my transcript is an F, is an F. And uh, I was glad to hear that California now is going to do away with D's and F's. So I'm petitioning Linfield now to get that F off of my transcript. I'm not sure that they'll do that or not. But uh, uh, but uh, 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 but yeah, he counseled me and he says, you know, don't you know, don't give up, blah blah blah. So I, I, I took it again and finally got a B actually. And. Uh, uh, but then Elkington, when I was a senior, he was, had, was well connected with Fred Meyer, Meyer and Frank at the time, uh, U.S. Bank particularly. And uh, matter of fact, there must have been, when I accepted the offer from U.S. Bank, there had to be 15 graduates, 20 graduates from Linfield College. I mean, I mean, high, high, high uh, uh, successful people there. So I, be, I got on their executive training program and uh, it was kind of, you were shopped around, kind of like an NFL draft at the headquarters. And then, you know, the, you go into to, uh, one department, international department, and I, I, I just loved the consumer credit department. And you got to be a kind of a cowboy because you, at those times, you, re, you re, repossessed cars. I mean, you, you, you actually stole them back to get them back because the, the bank had a conditional uh, uh, contract with the dealers that if they got them back after their past due for 90 days, then they, they were, they were uh, liable for the contract. And so, but then I was, I was in Portland and, and uh, was brought inside at a very, very loan, a large lo a consumer loan department. And, my, and the assistant manager there was Herb Duran. He came down to Salem at Ladden Bush. And in Salem, Ladden Bush was part of U.S. Bank, but they were called Ladden Bush. I mean, it was the largest branch in the system. We had the largest installment lending department down here. I, be, I was the number two guy. And, uh, and uh, it was just, a, just a, a great experience for me down here in, in Salem. 
And of that department, we had 26 people in that department. The branch had 175 in that department, in that branch. Now they literally have three, literally. Had a cafeteria up there. The, the, the managers of that branch uh, were all Jim Johnson, Oliverio, and, and a guy named uh, uh, Eskelson, John Eskelson, who became the CEO of U.S. Bank. And uh, uh, John and I got into U.S. Bank at the same time. He became a real banker, and I became a used car salesman. But, uh, but uh, I was the first one to leave the bank to go into the car business in 1972. I came down here in 70, left in 72, and by coincidence or what have you, seven of us of that department ended up in dealerships. I mean, it was amazing. We, we, we were really, really good. I mean, really good. We, we, we owned installment lending on, uh, in, in all of Oregon, Northwest, and what have you. And we really gave good service, low, low delinquents, and, uh, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, then I, then I uh, uh, went and went with a, 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 an Oldsmobile dealer. At that time, 71 to 79, the number one nameplate in America was the Olds Cutlass. And uh, that's a very big example of how you can screw up a brand like Coca-Cola. <laughs> I mean, really, number one name brand, 2005, in May, they stopped building Oldsmobiles. I mean, it, it was a disaster. And what happened in the 80s was, is that they put a diesel engine into, they had a gas block with, put diesel in it with a diesel head on it, and it was an absolute disaster. So anyway, so then I came up to, uh, that was 72, I was there about a year and a half. I came up here and became sales manager at this store here that I eventually bought way down the road. Then I went from here to about 74, this, you got to remember now there was no gas. Uh, we every kind of like what we're going through now, so to speak. And it, it wasn't quite as expensive as it is right now, but there was no gas yet. Every other every other day you could get gas. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, ran a store, Beaver and Dodge, in Portland through to seventy five and a half, and uh, and then uh, had an opportunity. Uh, Herb Duran, the the manager of the of this Latin Bush. It really put the deal together for me where I opened up the Toyota store up on, on Mission Street and had a buy-in. It was kind of unusual there. I always smile when, I'm talking to, when I was talking to Ken Austin. I says, you know, there's a difference between gross pay and net pay. And my buy-in was based on gross. So the more money I made, my higher the dollar amount I could buy in. However, my net was after taxes, my gross was too. So I was making really good money then. I mean, you know, this is 75, 76, making, you know, over 100,000. And so in today's money, that'd be, that's a lot of, that's really good money. And it's, everybody in my organization's always made, because we really were, we were very fortunate. But then I had to make up the difference between the two. So Gail, you know, my wife, she said, you know, you, you, you have this check stub that's, that's really nice, but we don't have any money. <laughs> and so we were one of the, you know, I, I say this tongue in cheek, but one of the higher earners with no money. <laughs> but but it, it created the buy-in for me. Uh, and then in 1980, Prime is 23, Chrysler, Dodge is going under, Lee Iacocca becomes the boss, and this guy, if you, want to, if you want to be successful, you get behind and water ski behind somebody in the right way that has a chip on their shoulder. And boy, he had a chip on his shoulder from Ford because they canned him. And then they put him in a big warehouse and he, 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 he tells that story. I mean, of course, he's passed away, but tells that story in a warehouse with his assistant with just his desk and a wire down for his phone, of course no cell phones then, and he was there for about 90 days and he took over Chrysler for two bucks a month or, or two bucks a year or some crazy thing. And he, but he was a car guy, really a car guy. Mustang, of course, was his, Ford was his baby, and then the Caravan, the Aries, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, made an offer to, uh, to buy this, this store here that we're sitting in. Uh, we did a bootstrap transaction. 
Capital p p uh, paid me off, bought me out. They didn't have to, but they bought me out, and about $100,000, gave that to the owner here. Then, then the corporation, the C corporation, that, would, that gave me about 10% of the stock. The corporation bought the rest of the stock by a note and put it in treasury stocks. My 10% becomes 100% with a whole bunch of debt. And you only can do that if it, you can prove to the IRS that you didn't have a pot to pee in, and then you can do a bootstrap. Otherwise, big corporations would do a bootstrap where the company buys itself out. Mm -hmm. Well, we were a legitimate bootstrap and paid off uh, Emerson early in, in four years. In six months, we became number one Dodge dealership in five states. In six months. A miracle. Absolutely a miracle. And I was, I really, really had a great team here and, and we convinced ourselves that, uh, that uh, you know, everybody in Salem, Metro Valley, should be driving our product, our Dodge. Of course that's impossible, right? But you can act like it. Mm -hmm. And if you wake up, if you wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to be selling some cars, I'm going to be satisfying the consumer in parts, service, body shop, and sales. Um, and then, and then too, this is this is a you know getting on my soapbox, but in a down market, most most businesses or people are really playing it close to the chest. Mm -hmm. So in effect, if you lean into the market, not being silly, but lean into the down market, your percentage of the market could be greater of what you earn back. <clears throat> my history has always been we've done better sales-wise financially in a down market than in an up market. Well, we did fine in an up market, but we didn't, we didn't excel like we did in a down market. I mean, we were, we were, we were really good, mm -hmm. really good. And so uh, uh, that, that was in the 80s. But then I, I got, a, I got a, 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 a mentor or a good friend, Jerry Frank, who just passed away, yeah. um, sent me a note in 1980, said, uh, um, if anybody can do it, you can. And I took that home to Gail and I says, this you know, the person who's been super successful, Jerry Frank of Myron Frank, and then with Hatfield and all that stuff, mm -hmm. says that, that I can do it. Well, just maybe I can, you know. So I put that in the, in the restroom, you know, the house, paid off Emerson. Then he calls me up and he says, Dick, I understand you paid off Emerson. And I said, yes, boy, it was really hard work, Gail, and I struggled to do that and all this, and we were very successful. And he says, but you know, really, you didn't pay off Emerson. And I says, uh, it was Mr. Frank then. I said, Mr. Frank, yes, we paid off Emerson. No, you did not pay off Emerson. The people that bought your goods and services paid off Emerson. When are you going to give back? So I'm 42 years old. Giving back was not on my radar. Although I helped a lot of people and all this stuff, you know, I mean, you know, we're, so that's 42, so 52, 53, 55 years old or so. Um, at 50, all of my family died at 70, which looks pretty darn young right now since I just turned 80. <laughs> but so, so I was really thinking about getting out at 60, and then I didn't know whether or not David even wanted the Benny in the business. So I, you know, I, uh, so he was like 25 or six at Linfield, coached him on, uh, not coached him, but you know, said, hey, you know, I, want, I need to know here in a few years, are you interested? So he, he did all the mundane jobs, he did everything else, <clears throat> and uh, he has attributes a lot better than 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 me, and and so at 60. Uh, we started a buyout then, and this is this is this is, and then that that Jerry Frank thing haunted me too, and so uh, we're the the giving back. It, it comes in a whole bunch of different forms. Um, I, I was asked to be on the on the I was I was on George Fox board for three years, and uh, Walker. Um, what's Walker's first name? Charles. Charles. Charles Walker says, well, how come you don't get on Linfield's board? You graduated from here. I said, well, you didn't ask me. And then I, I had a relationship with Ed Stevens, you know, and then he got sick and died. He had cancer. So I was flopping, you know, and, 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 and I had, oh, I had, I had a, we bought another store in Eugene. And so I, it was, I used that as an excuse to, uh, to, uh, 
to uh, to get out of the or get off that board. Mm -hmm. Great board. My daughter went to George Fox, mm -hmm. Gina, very successful writer, really successful writer. And but uh, uh, so I, I uh, uh, see. I lost my train of thought now. What was I talking about? Oh, about Walker. Mm -hmm. So Walker, Walker. I get on the board. So Walker comes over, and the way he raised money was come in and sit in your office and not leave. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I'm a 59-minute guy. 30 minutes is better, but 59-minute guy. Yeah, after that, you know, out of here, you know. And so, and so, you know, finally got around to what he was there for. He was trying to raise some money for that. That that uh, uh, theological house that they have there is mm -hmm. called Oman. Oh, Emas House. Emas House. Okay. So uh, I says, uh, okay, put me down for twenty thousand, which is you know, a lot of a lot of it's money. It's a lot of money today, but that was a lot of money uh, to me. And but I said it, it's going to be a Christian place, isn't it? I mean, it's going to be you know so. So then I said, I'll do it when it's ready to go. You're going to open the door, call me, and I'll give you a check. So David's in school, so he calls me and says, Dick, we're ready for your money. So I says, get David, and uh, I can't remember who the uh, chaplain was then. Uh, Bill Lapel? Yeah, it was Bill, I think. Yeah, Bill. Yeah, it was Bill. So we're sitting in, in, in Charlie's office, and, uh, and so you know, I got the check here, and David's sitting there, and Charlie's there, and uh, the chaplain's there. And, and so I'm stammering. I says, now, you, you be sure. Now, this, this is not, not going to be this is not going to be a... Uh, you know, uh, this is the times when we weren't, you know, there wasn't the wonk deal, there wasn't anything. I mean, this is me. I'm, I mean, I'm a pretty redneck guy, so, yeah, was, and this is my really first giving of money to Linfield. And so, so David says, uh, Dad, Dad, let, let me, let me. He says, uh, Mr. Walker, what my dad wants to know is are the communists going to be in there? Is there going to be any terrorists in there? He wants to know this money is going to be good for it. So we all laughed about it, and, and that was my first go around. Mm -hmm. Then, then when I was on the board, uh, we, we got in that, that board. Then, I mean, I, I, I got off at 25 years, but that bo that board then was just really uh, s bootstrap successful people, and yeah, we had Darlene Woolley. Mm -hmm. Uh, not uh, uh, yeah, Darlene Willie. Yeah, it was Darlene. Hooley, yeah, Hooley. Uh, Joanne Austin, uh, uh, the Keck guy. Uh, uh, what's his first name? Uh, uh, the, 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 the business building. William? Is that William? Well, he, he went by two initials. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, super guy. And then, you know, just normal, normal people. And so it came up one time on, on the talking about uh, uh, requirements to get into school. And I said to somebody, Mike McBride, I think, I says, hey, you know, we wouldn't be able to get into this school. You know, I really, you know, I really, you know, we, we, what happens to these? So, so that, was, that was my first, Gail and I first tipping our toe into, in my mind, and I really have changed. To what I'm going to tell you is not giving money. I don't give money to anything. I make a purchase, and I expect, like you expect, when you make a purchase, a return on investment. So I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not giving money in the, in the nothing. And then you need to ask me about about estate planning and stuff. But anyway, but so I said, okay. I want I want to do a, a, a scholarship of three uh, four thousand dollars. See four times three no th three thousand uh, dollars. If a person comes in on on uh, uh, probation is that the right word? What, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, probation. Probation gets off of it. They get three grand. Stay off three. Three and three, twelve thousand dollars. Okay, step, 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 step. Now, of course, it's all filled out like this. The very first kid, and they had to be recommended by their school, you know, a, a dean or or, a, or an advisor or something. The very first kid was from Sheridan. He lost his dad. His mom was ill, had three siblings, and he lived. I am not kidding. In the barn in the barn. 
So this kid, this kid, so, so th unfortunately this really fired me up when we had that great big campaign because no one, poor board, they couldn't, they couldn't handle me. <laughs> anyway, so, so uh, he became really, really successful. And I can, and, and, and I, I, and, and I, well, I know I was going to talk to you this morning. Here, I, here I've got four of, the, four of the people that got the deals. Every one of them has a story. Mm -hmm. Every one of them has a story. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. And to me, that, that, and then I kept thinking, you know, and, well, where's Jerry Frank? I'm gonna give him a phone call, you know. <laughs> but, but uh, what have you. And then, then we, uh, then we got, uh, I was chairman of the, uh, I, I love, I love the, uh, the uh, board uh, style of having the board meets every three months, the executive committee meets every month, chair, vice chair, and then we had five standing committees. Then those chairs and the, and, and the, the president of the school, we all met. It, was, it really, was, really was good. So we, and I was uh, the development, I don't know what they call that, I think we were the development uh, committee and I was chair of that. The first guy I was chair of it was, uh, was, uh, from uh, CMH to Hill, um, Jim, uh, God, really successful guy. Guy, he just, I just love the. I took his place. Can't think of his name. He always, everybody was complaining about parking. He had his, you know, CMH to Hill. You know, they, it was just an interesting story in itself. Five of these guys, professor, five, four other guys, all went in a different service in World War II. And if they would have got out live, they were going to form a company. And they did. CMH2 Hill, Eisenhower becomes president. Interstate system comes in, you know, the, throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. Those guys, oh, and they—they—they're they, they, not in Oregon anymore. I mean, they—they're they, in Corvallis, but they moved to Colorado. But we're off subject here. But anyway, so but but he was really a good guy, and he really took me under. You know, showed me this. <laughs> what you're supposed to do when you're on a board instead of just raise cane. Uh, so 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 I, I became. We're going to do this 26 million dollar development thing, and the co-chair was going to be Mike McBride. So it was the used car salesman and the bull shipper, and and and, and Vivian Bull. I mean, she is. In fact, I gave her husband that that the bull up there. Uh, uh, she 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 was so gracious, so. Uh, I mean, she really tolerated me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not an educator. I mean, I mean, I mean, really. God, I just loved her. We, we got along so well. And the internet was just coming in and stuff, you know, and all this good stuff. So our first meeting, 26 million, first meeting was at the, uh, was at the uh, airport in the Delta VIP room. Bride flies in, ice comes in, me, and we're going down the list of the, of the, of the, uh, of the uh, trustees, who's going to give what? So I'm thinking, I can't remember, it's 94 or 5 or whatever it was, I'm thinking 30 grand. 30 grand is going to be, you know, I'm thinking back pocket cash, not thinking about estate stuff, nothing like that. So we go up there and we go down alphabetical order. She gets to Vivian Bull, she says, put me down for 100,000. God, I'm thinking, 100,000 bucks? There's no way. Get down to Dick Ice, she says, you know, Put me down for a hundred thousand. They get down to McBride and I, and we look at each other. And we go, what the? You know, we're young business guys. I mean, we're not. So is it okay? So then, then, two months later or so, we get a phone call, and we have an opportunity to buy Hewlett Packard property. Okay, some. Yeah, I got to use better language than this, but some clown named as a tr trustee says, well, we need, to, we need to evaluate that and see whether or not, you know, we need to get some consultants and see whether or not we should buy that or not. And get, yeah, there, everybody was booing on the phone. Get that guy off the phone. Every college in America is going one house at a time. You know, well, I'm it's all landlocked. Here we got 117 acres. And that was an absolute miracle how that put place. We, they wanted 17 million. We paid 5 million for all those buildings and stuff, and then went downtown 
and got the zoning changed. So their value was 12 million. So they gave that 12 million to us. So the 12 and the five got to be 17. And I've used that. It was David Jubb who put that mm -hmm. together. I've, I, I've used that on, on, uh, on, you can actually net more on 501c3 giving on appreciated the real estate or value of assets than you can on selling cash. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's just, just real deal. So, okay, so now we're up to $60 million. Okay, I mean, that's, that, I don't care who you are, that's a, that's a lot of money. So we're, we're, we're at a board meeting. Now, this is about seven months later. Dick Ice comes in. He says, you know, guys, he says, I talked to my, you know, my wife's gone. She's passed. I talked to my daughter and she's okay with this. Put me down for a million bucks. I mean, you, you had, you had, they had to call an ambulance for me. This guy's a pastor. This guy is what, but it just made sense that in his estate planning, he wanted to see the dollars do something for that purchase and what the return investment was. So we have this big show up in, uh, at the Benson Hotel. Mm -hmm. We're in Tux's, McBride and I are doing our dog and pony show and everything else. So I didn't really share this real well with my wife, but pretty, kind of. So I gave, so I, uh, I, I said, Withnell family is going to give in the name of Bill, of, of uh, Dick Ice, one dollar and you'll see over there that his gift was one million one dollar and the withnell family will give one dollar less let me tell you it was an eye-watering moment and how we did it was was david's buying us out so we take c stock we're a c stock mm -hmm. gave it to linfield million bucks which was really something significantly less but the value of course you know we're rocking and rolling up like that we get, we don't pay federal taxes for five years we get audited immediately the guy comes in here and lives with us for a month no adjustments no nothing perfectly legal and 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 it was just it was just a, really a god thing i mean it was just just a miracle and we've done that over and over many many times uh, on deal but uh yeah we, we we that was that was that was really a campaign and the board was so tight together i mean it was just so tight together and we got the kid he had some of the some of the students over there that we had this giving day and stuff and then i mean I, they broke twenty five thousand or fifty thousand i mean it was just amazing how 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 is is a umbaya moment about coming together the reason the reason the reason that that uh i should go back and say my roots with linfield is is that when i was a sophomore uh, a significant problem happened in our family and the dean was dr bowl uh, bowls at that time and I was walking across, right there where Dylan, Dylan Hall was opening in, in, uh, in uh, 64, in the fall of 64. We, we, uh, we uh, got in there about uh, two months later than from what, September, eight, eight in the uh, Pioneer Trust building, or I mean the Pioneer building mm -hmm. underneath there. Never did understand why they, why they changed the logo on that and put these goofy, what is it, those, those, those acorns? acorns. Good God! I mean, I, I mean, you, you can leave that on the tape. That's about the dumbest idea I've ever heard because the identity of that school has always been pioneer at the at the top, Spe especially people who are given money. <laughs> Maybe the young people now they'll love the acorns. Oh God! I don't know whoever thought that marketing deal. You know, we won on that on that. I'm jumping here, but on that on that campaign, Allied Video put that campaign and won a national award. I don't know if you've seen that. We got KATU helicopter. They were down here for some bogus thing. And then we jumped on board of that thing with the cameras and stuff and took pictures of Linfield in every direction. He said ATU was a uh, college graduate, a Linfield graduate. But anyway, so I'm, so, you know, I'm down in the mouth. I'm not, I think I'm gonna go, go back in the woods, make some serious money, you know, else. And Boyle's coming to me, he says, Dick, he says, I understand you're going through some deal. He said, but I think you have, I think he used the word potential. I think you have some real potential. We're going to make you RA of Hewlett. 
he's be getting married the next year. And I, you know, and I was stunned. If this guy thinks 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 I can, you know, I can I can I can be a, a, a RA to a, to a men's dorm a men's dormitory. Yeah. Any contraband all went through me. <laughs> no, we had a we had a great RA. We had at that time, which was really great. At that time, the dorm mothers were all uh, Baptist. Uh, widows, and let me tell you, there was no bad language. No one broke the rules that were offensive to the to the, the. I can't think of her name, Mrs. May, I think it was. And if and, and if I had any problems, it was because if I had any problems and I got them solved by the, by the big football players and stuff, because it offended Mrs. May. I mean, I mean, honestly, it was. Mm -hmm. well, what a beautiful thing is is having these. Widow women, you know, yeah, that was that was really very cool, very cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, in in I don't know what else. What else you want? To say? That, that's kind of my story. That's a good story. I, I I answered a lot of my questions. Let me back up a second. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, you got you mentioned staying staying close to home, going to Linfield because you were in a relationship already, yeah. and, and then getting married while you're in college. Yes. What were your first impressions of Linfield, and and how did it kind of how did it kind of evolve as you as you grew and, and were at while you were a student? How did it kind of change while you were there? Yeah, that, that that's a really a good question. I, I uh, it was my you know I'm a I'm a single kid, you know. Which is, you know <laughs> my wife would say that's part of my problem. Uh, only one child in the family. Uh, uh, the 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 family thing of you know with me getting bad grades not kicking me out uh, the professor that I got an F in you know uh, and then I had some real aha moments they used to have Christian Emphasis Week and a guy named I was a sophomore a guy named Roger Fredrickson came through and he, God, he was a, a Baptist guy who was well known author well known which I didn't know at the time, of course, but they, and and, I, and and he came and, and emphasized, and I can remember in a fraternity, you know, asking asking him, where's in the Bible that says you can't drink beer, you know, and this is like in 1962, and he was very gracious, and we talked, you know, everything else. Then 1962 to 1984, Gail. Because, gets on a board called Renovari with Richard Foster, the famous author from George Fox. Mm -hmm. Okay. We go, drive up in the van in Colorado Springs and open the door, and Richard and, and Roger Fredrickson's there. And uh, got to know him really well. Just a just a beautiful Christian guy. Talks could talk to any lay people at all. Matter of fact, at Sidecourt, I, I went to Berlin with him and did a bunch of stuff with him. I was driving down from Portland about three years ago, from Portland to here, to our house, and I was thinking, Roger's getting pretty old. He's going to be dying. What am I going to say at his funeral? I got into Salem, and I thought, that is about the stupidest thing I've ever thought of in my life. I'm getting my butt on an airplane. I'm going to go tell him, and I ain't going to no funeral with him. So I get Richard Foster, we go. I says, Roger, I want to tell you how you affected my life and how you've been such a great buddy and a mentor and all this in my Christian walk. Uh, that's why I'm here. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be uh, at your funeral. So we go to dinner. He has a walker, and we have three or four other people there. And the waiter comes up, Afro-American, and Roger always says, "He says, well, what are your goals? You know, what do you?" He says, "Sir, I'm uh, I'm here uh, uh, waiting on tables because I'm going to save money." Roger was on this uh, uh, in North Dakota or so North Dakota, this uh, rural Baptist big big university. I can't think of the name of it. And uh, he was a board of trustees. Anyway, and he says, well, you, you should think about the school and stuff. He says, that's the one I'm going to go to. And, and we ate dinner. And right in the middle of the dinner, Roger gets up and he shuffles off. And I'm thinking he's going to the restroom. Come back, and then we order desserts and stuff. And 
and, and this guy's giving us a desserts, and this Afro-American, this young kid, and he says, he says, Roger says, young man, how serious are you about going to this college deal? He says, sir, I am really, really serious. I've got almost one tuition paid for to get going again, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm, I, that's what I'm going to do. He says, young man, I just made a phone call. And you're handled for four years. See, that's, that's the philanthropy part. Yeah. I later, later found out that uh, Linfield needs to do this. Every trustee had, had their, had uh, gave one call a scholarship away every year. Mm -hmm. Not for them. <laughs> but Roger said, hey, I'm going to be dead in a few years. I'm giving this guy four. Four years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so, so uh, I turned 60, and so I get, you know, d doing, I had some really, really, uh, Good, good friends on. Oh, I, well, here's here's here, here's here on the on the philanthropy thing. There's two sets of philanthropy on people of of wealth. Those who who okay, let me say it's put this way. In fifth at 55 years old, my in uh, what do you call it when you when you estate planning was about from the floor up to about right here. Gail and I just, my birthday was April the 8th, turned 80. I had some schmucks come over from Linfield. The <laughs> president didn't, which will cost him money. Uh, uh, so we went back in there just prior to my birthday. Estate planning was like this. Hmm? Now, there's two ways to look at that. It, obviously, you don't want to run out of money because you're going to get sick and all this kind of stuff, you know. But we have purposely since 60, 20 years actually, off most of our, 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 our large our assets, except this one right here, except this one right here, kept this one right here uh, uh, for end game and for, for Gina. Mm -hmm. But David's paid, paid uh, the store off, mm -hmm. and, he's, and, he, and in three more years, he'll pay all the other real estate that we have, all the other stuff around. And, and, and again, the attitude of not giving money to different things, but in, the, in, a pur but in, in purchasing and having an ROI. Mm -hmm. This community is really unique, Marion County. 60, 70, 80, 90 year olds are still here. You know, second, third, and fourth generations are still here. Jerry Frank lived here. He could have lived anywhere in Oregon, United States, or the world. He lived here. And the reason he is, he said that people made him successful. Meyer and Frank here in Salem mm -hmm. in the late 50s, 60s, and 70s was the large, the, the biggest per capita sales per capita, not, 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 you know, not in New York or something, but per capita in the nation. Meyer and Frank was. It's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. But, but uh, um, yeah, so that, that's been... Uh, well, I was going to say in the last three or four years, you know, we had the Croc Center, we had, mm -hmm. you know, that was 40 million. YMCA just finished that. Um, amphitheater. A a amphitheater, yeah, that was a small one. That was mm -hmm. only like you know, six or seven million. Union Gospel Mission was uh, was a 15.5. Uh, Boys and Girls Club, another one's 15.5. These are all happened at once. They mm -hmm. all, because they were had starts, false starts and stuff, they all have happened at once. Mm -hmm. Then we had... Uh, a challenge of two million dollars to get one million for 60 days in July for Union Gospel Mission, three million with uh, one million in 90 days just came off in November in the, in the Y. So there's some some really uh, some really uh, really great things happening over here that even though in spite of all this other stuff that's going on too. Well, you bring up the YMCA. Obviously, that was kind of a surprise to you. I know at your birthday. Uh, tell, 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 us, tell us about how Gail managed to pull that off. Yeah, that. Uh, I don't like surprises. <laughs> I mean, really. Oh, because because there's so many that. I mean. Uh, yeah, that was that was really a surprise. I mean, it really was. The idea of, of me having this birthday party was, uh, you know, if you have. Uh, 
alcohol and and wine or whatever else and food you can you can you see how many friends you have see so so I think there was like 300 or 400 people there the idea of it was to have the reason I spent that money and stuff is is to say thank you to the people but then also challenge them when they left and then that that all got shot up because at the very end they, they you know took over the meeting which you know is still uh, yeah, yeah, that was, uh, you know, I mean, sure, it's, you know, you're, you're acknowledged, I guess, in doing stuff and everything, but uh, our wealth has never been, you know, um, that, you know, it's, it's not, the, you know, multi-millions of dollars, but, but being in the car business, you have to be a micromanager, so, uh, I know I only put a dollar into something. I, 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 I go to the, if I'm on a board, I go to the meetings and everybody better show up and it better be only 59 minutes <laughs> or I'm out of there, you know. I mean, really. And, and uh, uh, we've had some great, great, great things. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, I'll tell you the, 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 this, this, this deal here. Mm -hmm. There was a deal in the, uh, in the, uh, in the paper in October, five or six years ago, that the this this uh, residential of 30 people was going to shut down there because they they weren't run right. We found out, but they shut down, and they had uh, male sex offenders in there. Now that's a whole another story. Recidivism in Oregon, I, I got involved in in that stuff, but the recidivism in Oregon is around 27 percent. Okay, if I ask a female anywhere, or you, in Oregon, what's the cynicism for sex offenders? You probably are thinking, be higher than that, mm -hmm. and maybe 70, 80 percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not, it's 10, 10 percent. And if you're under 18, it's less than 1 percent. But in Oregon, unfortunately, sex offenders are put in the same basket. Mm -hmm. You can't get jobs, you can't live any place, you can't, you can't, you can't, mm -hmm. you can't, you can't. Now the bad guys, the ten percent, maybe we shoot them. I don't know. I mean, that's serious stuff. It really is. But the ninety percent, though, you've just destroyed. They've destroyed their own, but they've destroyed their lives. Mm -hmm. Literally destroyed. Them. So I, I send I send a, a, a email to Bud Pierce. He's running for governor. Mm -hmm. Know him real well. Gail just went through cancer. He's just a great guy. Bud Pierce and Larry Tukarski. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Bud Pierce, he's me, emails me back. Uh, don't know anything about it. Tarkarski writes back, not interested. I said, okay, I've done my job. Uh, 30 days later, Tarkarski leaves me a, vo a voicemail and he says, uh, Dick, your, uh, your thing's been on my dash. I just got out of mass. Uh, I'm gonna look into it. So he looks into it and he says, guy, we had never talked. He says, guys, they're not being run right. Uh, they're cash flow poor, of about 10,000 a month. They need to do their kitchen and stuff. They need about 30,000 right off the front. Your first check is $13,333.33 to bring them up to speed. Then it's $3,333.33. Pierce writes back, you two guys, you two guys, are the most expensive friends I've got. By the way, where do I send my check? After about 10 months, they fired the other people, took it over, paid off the debt, gave it to Union Gospel Mission, get an email back, we're done. Never talked. Let me tell you, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's, that's a lot of horsepower. Mm -hmm. A lot of horsepower. Tikarski over here does the uh, C-Tech, which is you know where you have the jun juniors and seniors doing some. I had a grandson that became a really good welder there. Bots, buys Tories R Us for another deal. Except this is going to be McMinnville, uh, all around except 24J because 24J is going to the other one. We have all this funny money coming out of the government, which is creating a, just a little bit of inflation. Four million bucks. You know. He can go spend that on golf mm -hmm. or whatever. 
and he did three dramatic challenges in this town that was amazing, it was amazing. But we all started out, these 60, 70, 80 year olds, we started out with nothing. I mean nothing. And boy, if you don't think, if you think, if you think, uh, <laughs> Gail reminds me, you know, you put your underwear on one leg at a time, just like everybody else. So you don't get, you know, you don't get up there too much, but the giving back though, that's what we're, I mean, yeah, I, I just love to get the young people like that, you know. Are you gonna die? What's your first, what's your first name? Christina. Christina, are you gonna die? You see, you, see, you know, nine out of 10 people, when I have young people, they raise their hand. Yeah, we're gonna die. That's not the question. The question is not whether you're gonna die or not. It's what you're gonna do between now and then. And that's whether if you're 80, 90 or 100. I mean, really. Okay, let's talk to what else you got. We're doing on time. Yeah, we're doing good. Doing good, all right, excellent. Um, what are the biggest changes you've seen in Linfield? Oh, that's right, Linfield. You mean you've been, you've been involved with it for 60 years now. Yeah. So tell me, tell me what's, what, what, what stays the same and what's changed. Yeah, I, I think what's changed is, is, is what's changed in totally society, you know, society. It, it's uh, unfortunately that, uh, you know, this woke, woke thing, I mean, I don't understand, you know, I don't understand, I, you know, it's hard for me to understand the, the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the social angst that we have, you know, we, I experienced some of that in Vietnam, the Vietnam thing. Um, um, I got caught up in that uh, because I was going to be ROTC. Kennedy says, if you're married with a kid, you wouldn't get called. He gets killed. I get drafted at 21. So now instead of being an officer, I'm, I'm a peon. And so I stayed in for about eight years until I got into the car business and came out as a seven, uh, which is a good experience. But, uh, but uh, um, uh, that, I think that's, you know, the, you know, it gave, gave us some angst, the Withnell's angst, you know, when, when the Black Lives Matter thing on the surface and down about four inches really does make sense, really makes sense. But then when you peel the onion and go down to the basis part, when, you, when you're being against the society as, a, you could say society caused the problem, but then when you become, and then now that everything has been exposed about the money and stuff and all that kind of stuff. So when there's a little bit of a challenge there on the Withnell Com Commons over there for a while, but at least nothing was destroyed. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's that, you know, that's changed. But, I, but the costs and stuff uh, uh, are, uh, are, you know, are, are significant. Uh, you know, I, I, I was always a promoter on that 117 acres. You know, the one that's, that's back there, I, I thought maybe an executive golf course could be put in there. And you put houses all around. The model that I was presenting was uh, you, you pay for the house, say it's uh, $300,000, then you subtract it 10% down to 50%, then it goes back to the school, and then they resell it after they refurbish it, but then you get all the freebies by going over to the school, and then you have mentors over to the school, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, that uh, Very, very disappointed in athletics. Uh, they don't, I mean, not not giving the value of athletics, uh, like it or not. First of all, enrollment by the athletics is huge at Linfield. It saved their butt in the 70s. Uh, it saved their rear end in the 70s. Rule of thumb is 100 kids is two million bucks. Okay, there's only one college that did not croak under enrollment. Corbin went down. Or Willamette, Linfield, Lucent Clark, Pacific. Who didn't? George Fox. George Fox spent three and a half million dollars to start. I had I had lunch with Robin Baker, and I'd you know one of these seventy-five dollar lunches at Joy. Thanks, Ken Austin. Uh, no, thank you, Joanne. That was her idea. Beautiful place, of course. I says, Robin, there's no way that you can be successful. As a president of a college, you're a professor, you don't know nothing about business. And he goes, Dick, he says, he leans over and he says, I'm like an athlete, I'm competitive. Linfield's doing, you know, he's kicking away nurses. Oregon State's doing engineers. 
We're upside down 60, round numbers, 60 to 40 females. So football. The first year he spends three and a half million for buying, to do football. So the first year he has 80 students. They're not playing football yet, but they're all male, which is about a million seven, okay? He got his three million back in 18 months and, 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 uh, and, and now they're about 50-50, mm -hmm. I think, close to that. But really, really aggressive, really, really, really aggressive. I mean, he was the first one that did the billboards and he was the first one that did this and the first one that did that. Although he didn't hire my daughter. Uh, <laughs> my daughter's been a New Yorker twice. And, and the New York Times once, half page deal. She's, she's really been successful. I got, we're, I got all of her, anyway, Hey, I mean, there's even Brown. Uh, uh, anyway, but uh, but she's, she's, we, we did a chair over at Corbin. Hmm. She could have done that at, at George Fox. But anyway, um, um, I'm, I'm drifted. Where'd I go? Where? We're talking about Linfield. Oh, changes, no changes. No, the athletic department. Gee, you can't, I mean, honestly. Eastern Washington did the same thing when 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 I was when I, when, when Jake was over there. Mm -hmm. it, it becomes a becomes a there there's, the people don't give weight to what happens when you come onto the campus in the fall. I mean, every successful campus that has strong has a real shiny object. You know, whether it's Gonzaga and the basketball and soccer or whether it's Eastern Washington or Montana, Montana State, mm -hmm. and Linfield has got a, you know those, those, those bleachers in that Linfield, they got those free from Tacoma Dome. And hell, you can't even, you, you, I mean, I'm, I'm a normal size guy, you can't even get in there. I mean, it's crazy. Water leaks and everything else. But I mean, you could, you could have, you, you, don't, you don't sell that program as a football stadium. You have you have physical fitness stuff there. You have the you have the degrees in in, in uh, what do you call it? Uh, physical, Exercise science. Ex science, it's all that stuff, you know. But people have that. People like to win. I mean, some of the people don't. I guess. I mean, some are whining and whimpering. But but you know, this is still the best country to live in. And if you don't like it, get the hell out. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm on my soapbox now, but you know, people are moaning and groaning and say, you know, they don't like anything else and they're moving out to another state. Well, why don't you moan and groan and do something about it here? Mm -hmm. Or Linfield, or George Fox, or whatever else, you know, wherever your roots are. You know, just uh, not, uh, not being, uh, you know, quit blaming, you know, people my age, you know, they, you know, they need to, <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> so, we got about, so about a few minutes here. Yeah. Um, what's in the future for you and, and for the Withnell family? Huh. Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, uh, we've had some challenges with uh, Gail's health and stuff, and, and uh, yeah, you know, that's, that's really a good question. Um, 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 I don't know, you wake up in the morning and you have some things to do and stuff, you know, I get, I'm, I'm, I'm going from here to a meeting and looking at the Statesman Journal building over there. They want to sell that and it'd be great for daycare. Ga daycare is a big thing right now, in my mind. Uh, and I mean daycare, not at nine o'clock to three o'clock for the wealthy. I'm talking about six in the morning to six at night or later and full shopping service there, so people, single parents stuff. I mean, I can, I can moan and groan about single parents, you know, you know they're not, you know, all that. Belong. that's the way that the environment is. We need to come alongside, because the kids are, is what's important. I mean, we're not talking about selling cars here. We're talking about kids, and that's just really, we, we, we were law and order here in 2000, so on methamphetamine, mm -hmm. I mean, things were being stolen, and methamphetamine was terrible. And then all of us who, who, who said, you know, let's really do something, and the police did, then all these kids showed up for foster care. I mean, you can't imagine me being a foster parent. But I'm telling you, we, we got the faith community together. We had, a, we had meetings where we, ra I, we had one meeting in the morning that he had to be a senior pastor and a chair board member, 
it was a timeshare meeting to be asked <laughs> to be Brian Johnson when Pamela Abernathy the judges and all this kind of stuff was there and I did the close we raised 50 families at that meeting and the next year we did 150 you know so you know I say got, we got a little bit you got a little bit excited about that, but uh, but you know and we also got rid of the methamphetamine too. But we took but the unintended consequence. So you know that's what's so crazy about it at my age to think about this. You know the, the gas deal and stuff. We need a soft landing. You just don't go bam and stop it because everything everything's doing with the gas. I mean bread, <laughs> everything. So you yes you do that, but then you need to be looking at maybe. Uh, nuclear or maybe other stuff, but you can't just whack it down like that. Good God. And it's hurting the people. You, next time you get gas today or whenever you do it, ask the pump guy. Hey, I've got a curious question for you. Anybody come in here just with a $20 bill? Just a $20 bill? He'll say yes, but they come back in about four days. People can't fill up? Hell, it's a hundred bucks. I mean, jeez. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, just, it's common sense, you know, we don't, I mean, yes, we need to be worried about the climate and all that stuff, too, but, you know, it's like the logging and stuff, it's just, yeah, yep, 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 but see, we're unique right here in the Middle Valley because we have people that, that have, you know, lived here and all that, see, Portland in 1980 had 13 Wall Street companies, now they only have one, Nike, <laughs> and so when Intel moves to Arizona, and the Intel CEO guy lives in Arizona and gives 10 million to the opera. He's only going to give 50 or 60 thousand to something up here mm -hmm. because he doesn't live there. Mm -hmm. see, see, we convinced the car dealers, when we're competitive, that if we give back in this community, high tide raises all boat and more people will buy cars. We've had car dealers, we're down to six. I mean, I mean the products are all the same, but, but, but they're, they've, we had 13 car dealers. Four or five of us would be number one in our zones because people were buying here and not someplace else. That's why you give back. You get that reputation that you're giving back. Unfortunately, they're not all dodges, but you know. Norm Miller said this, Interstate Battery. They're, 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 uh, they're, uh, uh, corporate mission statement. Every single car in America will have an interstate battery. Hmm? Impossible, right? But you act like that. See, and of course I grabbed onto that and I told everybody here, everybody's going to be driving a Dodge or a Hyundai or whatever. Yeah, you can't get too cocky either because Hyundai was a piece of junk. It's, I, some guy begged me to buy that. I gave him $6,000, a car under the table. Eight years later, I spend $10 million on a new facility, David just spent seven million to upgrade it, and it wasn't because of our prowess of being business people. But one thing was is this: Koreans don't like the Japanese, and both out of North America are absolutely equal Hyundai, Hyundai and, and Toyota. But in North America, Hyundai's just becoming a pimple, you know. But uh, it's really a good car right now, and Tiger Wood can thank himself for being alive. You know, he only hurt himself from here down, 13 airbags, hit a tree at 80 miles an hour, took off the front end, took off the front end, the windshield mm -hmm. and anything in front of that was gone. Did what it was supposed to do. Exactly right, we shoved it underneath, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Okay. Well, fantastic. Well, uh, thank you for your time. We'll go ahead and uh, let you go to your next thing here. We got okay. your wrapped up right on. 58 yeah. minutes. How about that? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank you so much.